Good morning, it's Thursday, October 25th, 2018. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Taste and See, and our scripture is Psalm 34, verse 8. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in him. Let's unpack those words. The first word is taste. To taste here is literally to perceive by experiencing. It involves a conscious decision to be involved. I recall a TV commercial years ago for Life Cereal. Some boys were reluctant to taste the new cereal their mom had brought home, so they tried it on their little brother Mikey. This is so like beginning a relationship with God. Many people are more than willing to give their opinion about God without first knowing him. It's the theological equivalent of Monday morning quarterbacks, guys who could hardly find the practice field and warm the bench for two seasons in high school, presume to know how the professionals ought to do it. People who claim to know all about living the spiritual life but have never even had an authentic conversation with God have not tasted, they've only looked. Tasting God means taking him at his word. It's a leap of faith that says, I commit my life to you. What are you going to do with me? Then there's the word see. If tasting is to perceive by experience, seeing is knowing by that same experience. There's something that happens when you take that leap of faith, something on the inside that validates the closeness of God. There's an old expression of doubt that goes, I'll believe it when I see it. But with God, it's the other way around. You'll never see until you believe. And what is it that we see anyway? What we see is that the Lord is good. That means trust and be happy. To take refuge in the Lord is to trust. Happiness with the general direction and outcome of life is a matter of trust, always. That's because we can't see the future, but God can, and so trusting our lives and future to the one who holds that future is the only sane decision in the playbook. In some of John Wesley's sermons, he described an experimental aspect of religious activities, an experiencing of God's power in one's life. Henry Blackaby is well known for his Experiencing God writings. Blackaby contends that when we cooperate with the move of God in our lives, we grow as a strong and useful disciple. It's this that we see here. A person tastes by committing himself in a leap of faith to God's control over his life. Because of this leap, there's a seeing, a knowing deep down that God is truly good. Faith is born in the inner self, and this leads to a contented heart and soul, happiness within. David, the psalmist here, knew what he was talking about. When he was tasting and seeing and trusting, he was among the most blessedly happy of men. When he got away from God and trusted in his own ways, his own strength and desires, he became the most miserable wretch on the planet. He could write about being incredibly blessed, and he could also recount the emptiness of having forfeited the presence of God's Holy Spirit. For you today, now as much as we can talk all day about this, it does little to stir your taste buds. It's like an apple. I hold it, I describe it while I eat it, and then chomp. <laughs> oh, it's delicious, juicy, crunchy, sweet. It's got that tiny hint of tartness that comes from Upper Connecticut orchards. <laughs> Boy, that's good. Did you taste it? Wasn't it good? Did you enjoy that superb taste when I bit into it? Are you satisfied? Are you happy with that? Of course not. You watched. Your mouth may have watered. You may have tried to ignore my rudeness at eating without offering you some. But you didn't get near it, did you? You're just as empty as when I started. In order for you to see how good it is, you've got to taste for yourself. You um, chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.